right, so this is the general idea. This is with a single lead system. You can see <laughs> it shoots electricity down the, um, the, uh, the stick in this case is going, this is subclavian basically. Wire goes in. <laughs> this is very basic. Let's do the let's do the so actual surgery. Like, yeah, we expanded the pocket. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Fresno. It's already better. We're in California. Not to be xenophobic. Everybody's wearing masks though. I like that. A lot of masks. No, this is a competitive device as well. Apparently all the videos are. Alright, so lidocaine goes in. He obviously released uh, permission because we're showing his face. Yeah. So, physician is now ready to make the incision. So they broaden it out a bit using electric artery. It allows, it basically prevents a lot of bleeding. It cuts and cauterizes at the same time. I suppose I could let because I electrically we can actually uh, yeah. control bleeding, what we call cautery. I'm just sucking down to just above the muscle. Dr. Lee is creating the pouch where the pacemaker will sit. But I always go to right That's just on top really of that muscle, muscle. Right, so we, yeah, we so the So that gives pouch. us a good uh, layer of skin and fat to support the pacemaker. Even though it's small, you want some degree of support. Otherwise, over time, it'll erode through like the skin. You want it as tight as possible. So often At Fresno Heart and Surgical Hospital, Benito Jimenez's heart so is beating so dangerously so slow. So Dr. Coy Lee is installing an artificial pacemaker. Now, the way we get the lead, the pacemaker at least into the heart is by getting yeah. IVs into the yep. vein that yeah. the arm. Yeah. We've already mapped that out with that little venum gland yeah. like this. So we know it's yeah. there, we know it's the appropriate size, and now we could try to get into it. Using real-time x-rays as a map, Dr. Lee can insert guide wires and IV tubes like into Benito's on. veins. Once so the needle's in the vein, got a wire going the in needle's hollow, of course, I can thread the small wire into the vein to get access. An access kit. So now once the wire's in, I just slowly thread and exchange these small and tubes and upsize so into the appropriate size uh, uh, IV. With ours. These are the special IVs which the pacemaker leads are threaded through. Now we have the wire inside the vein. These slide so very easily over the, the, uh, the wires to get into the vein. And about, once this is inside uh, the vein, we can thread the wires into better. the vein. Benito Jimenez is having problems with his heart rhythm. So the 64-year-old is getting a pacemaker. This is the pacemaker lead. Very soft, silicon-based, so it's very difficult for this lead to perforate. And it, it kind of moves with the heart, and when our body moves around, our veins stretch and move too, and so this will have the flexibility to move with that. This side plugs into the pacemaker. You see a, a ring here and a tip there, so there's actually two electrodes. Dr. Lee carefully inserts one of the pacemaker's electrical leads into Benito's so we'll heart. So, uh, this part's a little more trickier. I, I like, I guess, we're even a little professionalist, but I like the lead to go in and look at a certain R and the RV. Because Make sure it's in the right position, it doesn't look the same position. on the side if you have to there go we go. That's this, this, this entire time, so the lead is inside the heart. The first lead is now in the proper position. So now we're going to put in the second so lead. In his situation, the, the two leads, one serves as a backup. The primary the lead that's going to be facing is actually the one I'm about to put in right now. And the one we already put in will be the backup lead. Pacemakers only function, only pace when they need to. And so, in order for it to figure out when it needs to pace, it has to be able to see what the actual heart rate is going at. So we test to see how well it's seeing things. It's called sensing. Both leads are now in place and working properly. It's now time to attach the pacemaker. One week after retiring, Benito Jimenez learned he needs a pacemaker. So here's our pacemaker. 
you see how big it is. It's, it's not little, really that big of a device right? at all. Yeah. I suspect that he'll pace, pace quite a bit, but only one chamber, so I'm hoping it'll last him at least 10 to 12 years. So what he's describing so there's is ports here where the leads plug in. And they, they go in here, and so then we screw okay, this screw in here to make sure the leads are seated and fixed in its position. Right? Mm -hmm. But in this country, we almost always put in new leads with those because of the safety. So, so I got make sure it's tight. connected, that's on the top. Now your ventricular lead serial number we is 843. We and always have to verify which lead is which, because you want only want the appropriate chambers to be placed in the correct sequence. So they have to go into the correct ports. So we read off the serials, we recheck everything. When they plug in, I confirm that we're in the right chamber. So if I pace, and I pace the B, it should be So that's very nicely. You'll have a little badge of courage bulging out there, but it closes very nicely. He's doing well. The procedure went as well as expected. I'm very happy with the way things went. This pacemaker will support him for quite a long time. His heart is otherwise healthy, with the exception of the slow heart rate. So I really expect him to live for at least another decade or two. Yeah, that that felt a little weird. At Fresno yeah. Heart and Surgical Hospital, so 64. The second the ventricular lead is inactive now, unless it develops. In every timing cycle, yeah. So in every timing cycle, you'll have it where, um, which is to say every beat, it will pace the A. It'll make sure that it conducts through. If it does, right, we get a V. It doesn't have to do anything. But if it doesn't for some reason the patient develops heart block, or you're setting the device to have a very short delay, then it would pace the V. Yeah. Okay. It follows through on every single cycle. Yep. And there's, uh, we'll talk about, I'm sure, tomorrow, because we're going to have you know, time to talk uh, pre, within, and after case. Uh, there are programmed codes to tell how a pacemaker will function. So that code is called the NBG code. I'll print it out for you guys tomorrow. Um, it's just the name of uh, two organizations that founded the pacemaking uh, concepts that were lumped together and they became NVG. Uh, they, uh, they define the behavior of devices. So it's like, where do they pace, where do they sense, and how they interact, basically. And then we add things like rate response and shock and all of that. So then tomorrow we're going to surgery? Mm -hmm. we, don't, we all don't spread in, correct? No. Uh, right. You'll be... So there's only basically two people in the room that are going to be scrubbed. The physician and there'll be a scrub tech. We'll be adjacent or behind in lead, but not wearing gowns or gloves. So then you'll be able to explain to us? Yes. I'll be the guy talking. Cool. I think we're good. You can stop recording.